Hi, my name is Usha. I lead the Global Multidimensional Poverty Index Project at OFI, University of Oxford. The Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, or Global MPI, is the most well-known application of the Alkaya Foster Method that was covered in the previous session. What is the Global MPI? The Global MPI is a global assessment of acute multidimensional poverty that covers 100 over countries in the developing regions of the world. The Global MPI was first published in 2010. It was developed by OFI in collaboration with UNDP's Human Development Report Office. In 2018, OFI and UNDP jointly undertook the first major revision of the Global MPI. The purpose of the revision was to align the Global MPI more closely to the 2030 Development Agenda, thereby improving its usefulness for evaluating poverty and acting effectively to end it. Of course, the revision was also made possible by the significant improvement in data or indicator availability in the household service. The global MPI primarily draws individual and household level information from two major sources. The Demographic Health Service, or widely known as DHS, and Multiple Indicator Cluster Service, widely known as mix. In this second slide, I present the global MPI structure. The global MPI measures non-monetary dimensions of poverty directly. The global MPI uses information from 10 indicators that are grouped into three equally weighted dimensions, health, education, and living standards. These dimensions are the same as those used in the UNDP's Human Development Index. The MPI has two indicators for health, that is nutrition and child mortality. It has two indicators that make up the education dimension, which is years of schooling and school attendance. Finally, it has six indicators as part of the living standards dimension. These are cooking fuel, sanitation, drinking water, electricity, housing, and assets. The indicators within each dimension is equally weighted. This means the indicators of health and education dimension reserve more weight in comparison to the indicators of living standards. In slide three, we identify the deprivation cutoff for each of the 10 indicators. This allows us to uniquely build a deprivation profile for each person in the surveys that are covered by the global MPI. In terms of nutrition indicator, we identify individuals as deprived if they live in a household that has a child under five who's stunted or underweight, or if the household has a young adult between the age of five to 19 years who has low BMI that is adjusted for age and gender, or if the household has an adult between the age of 20 years and up to 70 years who has low BMI. Next, we identify individuals as deprived in child mortality if they live in a household where a child under 18 has died in the last five years preceding the survey year. Individuals are deprived in years of schooling if no household member aged 10 years or older has completed six years of schooling. In other words, if at least one member within the household has six years or more schooling, then everyone in the household will be identified as non-deprived. Individuals are deprived in school attendance if any school age child is not attending school up to the age at which he or she would complete class eight. For example, if the household has three children of school age, two are attending school while one child is out of school, then everyone in the household will be identified as deprived in school attendance based on the information of this one child who's not attending school. It should be noted that for indicators related to health and education, each household member may be identified as deprived or not deprived according to information that is provided by other household members. In such case, 
we assume the negative effects of not achieving certain outcomes are shared within the household. Across living standards, we identify individuals as deprived if their household uses solid fuel for cooking, uses unimproved or shared sanitation facility, consumes drinking water from unsafe source or the source is at least a 30 minute round trip walk, has no electricity connection, has inadequate housing, and do not own more than one of the eight small assets that are considered as part of the global MPI. In slide four, I aim to give you a sense of reality of individual's deprivation profile. Please let me introduce you to Amuda from Tamil Nadu, India. Not her real name, but the person you're seeing in the picture on your right is real. Amuda and her family was interviewed by a group of undergraduates from Lady Doak College. The interview was generously supported by the principal and faculty members of the college. The college is located in the southern city of Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Amuda lives in a rural community near to Madurai with five of her family members. Her father works as a manual laborer in a construction site. He has poor health, hence the household is deprived in nutrition. Her mother also works in the construction site and suffers from severe back and knee pain due to the strenuous work. Amuda's mother has lost two babies giving birth at home with no access to medical care. But following the definition set by the global MPI, the household is not deprived in child mortality because the death is not reason. It took place some 15 years back. The family is not deprived in the dimension of education. Amuda herself is currently attending secondary schooling, having successfully completed primary schooling. As indicated by the second picture, they are deprived in cooking fuel as the family cooks with wood as they cannot afford a gas cylinder. They practice open defecation and draw the drinking water from an unprotected well. They are deprived in sanitation and drinking water. The family has electricity, but this is drawn from a neighbor's supply. The family is deprived in housing as they live in a rented primitive shack built on a wasteland. They are also deprived in assets as they do not own more than one of the small assets as defined by the global MPI. In summary, Amuda and her family are deprived in six out of the 10 weighted indicators of the global MPI as indicated by the colored boxes in the deprivation chart. In slide five, we broadly summarize the steps in computing the global MPI. We first identified the 10 indicators that relate to the global MPI. In the second step, we build a deprivation profile for individuals. We drew information from Amuda and her family as an example. We know that Amuda and her family are deprived in six of the 10 indicators. They are deprived in nutrition, which has one sixth of the indicator weight. They are also deprived in five of the six indicators that are part of the living standard dimension, where each receives one eighteenth of the indicator weight. We then sum the weighted deprivations that Amuda and her family faces. This is one sixth plus one eighteenth times five. The deprivation score sums to 44.4%. Once we have computed the deprivation score, we move to the third step, that is to identify who is poor. In the global MPI, a person is MPI poor if the person's deprivation score is equal to 33.3% or higher. Amuda and her family is MPI poor given that their weighted deprivation score is 44.4%. In the final step, the global MPI combines two pieces of information to measure acute poverty, incidence or headcount ratio and intensity or the average share of deprivation experienced by poor people. This follows the AF method. The global MPI's aggregate poverty number is powerful for communication purposes. On average, 23% of the world's 5.7 billion people living in the developing regions are multidimensionally poor. This suggests that some 1.3 billion people are living in acute multidimensional poverty. The global MPI is also a high resolution lens because it can be broken down to subgroups and places, making it very meaningful for policy. 
we know that almost half of the MPI poor are children under 18. In terms of comparison across world regions, we know that some 57.5% of people living in sub-Saharan Africa are MPI poor compared to some 1% in Europe and Central Asia. Within sub-Saharan Africa, the hate count ratio ranges from 92% in South Sudan to 6.3% in South Africa. Zooming further into Uganda, we find that hate count ratio is 96% in Karamoja, while it is as low as 6% in Kampala. Evidently, there is substantial variation in multidimensional poverty between and within countries. In terms of patterns of poverty, we are also able to analyze how much each indicator, marked by the shades of red, pink, and blue in the chart, contributes to overall poverty. In conclusion, the global MPI provides a global account of acute multidimensional poverty that is transparent, comparable across countries, and the numbers can be easily disaggregated by rural urban areas, for age groups, and by subnational regions.